Yeah. 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 So let's get into the tea. This is part nine of Who the F Did I Marry? Tick Teasy. What's going on? This is part nine of Who the F Did I Marry? Shout out to YouTube for sending out my notifications so y'all are getting these videos. And YouTube, I mean, TikTok, if y'all want to see the full reaction, hit the link in, in the uh, description. All right, let's get it. All right. Part nine of Who the F Did I Marry? So we're pausing on the house stuff. Let me tell you about the car. So when I met my ex-husband, I was driving a 2012 Nissan Rogue, um, fully loaded. It had quite a few miles on it. Nissan but Rogue. Never heard of it. it. It got me from A to B. It was, in a, it was in good condition, but I was upside down in the car. Okay. He was driving a 2018 Ford Taurus. Okay. Um, super, uh, sport mode. I know he had a sport mode on the car, and I love driving that car. Um, when he told me how he was a regional manager, he told me that one of the perks that came with the job was that he would be getting a company car. First of all, he wasn't no manager. First of all, he wasn't going to work. I don't believe he had a job. That's how I feel about the whole situation. But all right, let's continue, Checker. I'm, mm -mm. I don't like it. And so we spent time going to Range Rover of South Atlanta. Um, we spent time going to Jaguar. We spent time going to BMW. We spent now something. You know what? I'm listening. Time going to uh, Ford which was on Mount Zion in Morrow, if you all are familiar with that area. He test drove a whole lot of cars. In the end, he decided on a BMW sedan. I was there when he test drove the car. I got in the car with him. I loved it. Um, and he explained to the salesperson, you know, I'm getting a company car. I need to get a printout of the full price of the car, tax tag and title because what my company is going to do is wire over the money for the car. The salesperson was like, okay, you know, apparently. What would make you think that a company is going to wire over some money for a car that they could have gotten themselves with their company car? <sighs> apparently that happens a lot. Yeah. So he gave him a printout with the tax tag and title for the car. Um, in front of me and the salesperson, he called the person in the finance department for his job. If y'all are, if y'all are past this point, do not say what happened. Now that will get you blocked today. Okay. Because I, I am too intrigued. I want to see what happened and I don't want to know from y'all. I want her to tell me. I want a genuine, genuine reaction. Okay. I attempted to watch some last night and went to sleep. So that let me know I don't need to do that. So I am not in the mood for y'all to mess up my storyline. Okay? So don't say nothing. Obviously, I have no idea what this person's name is. But he called the person. He explained to them this is the amount of money. He said uh -huh. the president of the company, so-and-so, has authorized uh -huh. for him to get a car, not spending more than... I think 90,000 tax tag and title. Mm -hmm. The BMW came out to just under 90,000. Mm. Um, and so he, I remember this conversation so fucking vividly. Uh -huh. So he, he's on the phone in mm. front. I'm saying I'm sitting down, the salesperson sitting down at their desk. And he's like, they, you know, they put me on hold. Uh -huh. And so he's like, he, I guess the person comes uh, back. And he says, um, yeah, the, the price of the car is blah, blah, blah. He was like, give me a second and I can send you a picture of that printout that uh, shows tax tag and title for the BMW. Uh, he gets off the phone. He takes a picture of it. He sends it to whoever. He waits about. Who did he call? <laughs> in minutes, he calls the person back. He says, did you get it? Apparently the person did get it. But the person who can who can actually physically do the wire transfer had gone home for the day. So what he says to nah. um, the BMW salesperson, he's like, okay, we're gonna have to do this tomorrow because so-and-so went home for the day. I don't know who the salesperson is. I can only tell you from my viewpoint what I thought. I had no reason to think 
this was a lie. I really didn't. Because you had every reason to think that it was a lie. He lied about the house. If you lie about a house, girl, you will lie about, ooh. <laughs> like lying about a house is on a different level of playing with my livelihood that I can deal with, okay? So I would never believe you with anything else. I mean, you can't even lie to me about some deodorant at this point. I'll never believe nothing you say again. So a house, you had every reason to believe. Because again, you got to keep, please keep in mind the circumstances that all of this is happening. We're inside the dealership. We're sitting at the desk of this person. He gave us the printout. He's on the phone, do, you know, doing business, basically saying, look, I need, this is how much money the car is going to cost. He's taking a picture of it. He seemingly is texting someone saying, this is how much, you know, this is proof of how much it is. Then he asked the BMW salesperson, I need your wire transfer information. The guy got up, rushed over to, I guess, their finance area to get the wire the bank wire information because uh -huh. obviously you have to wire it a certain kind of way uh -huh. rushes back over gives it to my ex-husband my ex-husband's like okay first thing in the morning we will get this wired over and then you know i'll come and pick up the car yeah uh -huh. my fiance me will drive me up here to pick up the car so we leave he felt like because at the time that this all happened, wow. I was pregnant. So he felt like, look, we're about to have a baby. I don't want you driving that Nissan Rogue. No, 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 no. He wanted to take you out of your comfortability and tease you with some bullshit ass dream. Okay. So he could later then crush. Okay. Crush you. I'm emotional about this. I want to get you something up. I want to get you something more secure, something new. He was a sorry something else. Okay. I really wanted a Kia. <laughs> I really wanted a Kia Telluride. Um, and he was like, well, let's, let's look at the warranty. This man knew a lot about cars. He knew a lot about the warranty. He knew a lot about the depreciation value. And so he did talk to me a lot about what will we get the most for our money. Um, we test drove, when I say we, I, I test drove a Kia Telluride, a Kia Sorento. He didn't like either of those. He had me test drive a Ford Explorer. He didn't really care for that. Then came time where he really wanted me to get a BMW. Um, he really wanted me to get a BMW X5. So he took me to B global BMW imports which, if you know anything about Atlanta, it's off of Cobb Parkway, but you can see it off of set, uh, off the highway. I believe 285 is where you can see the Global Imports BMW dealership. He took me there. He had me test drive an X5, an X6. Um, he also had me test drive a, uh, I think I'm gonna get the numbers wrong, a 525, which was a sedan. I did not like that. I wanted an SUV. Um, I loved driving the BMW. He also had me drive an M series, test drive an M series. So he was very adamant that I should get a BMW. Nah. The reason being is because according to him, he had a BMW wow. in California wow. when he lived in San Diego. He had a BMW that he loved. It was a white BMW. He showed me pictures of the BMW. Anybody can pull up something on Google. But not only that, how he got 900000 600000 in his bank account, and he over there driving, uh, um, damn, what'd she say the car was, y'all? Something inexpensive. And it's 2018 at the time. I'm just saying for him to be this halfway millionaire, what happened to the BMW? See, them the type of questions that I like to ask. So he showed me pictures of this white BMW that he had. And unfortunately, the car got totaled about two months before he moved to Georgia. So he had totaled. Received, 
a BMW totaled. They supposed to give you a check. And he went to Ford Focus. Got it. Or Ford Taurus. Got it. Um, money, not a lot, but uh, some money to get another car. And he used it to get the Ford Taurus. He took BMW money to go get a Ford Taurus. I'm going to let her talk. Because he was like, I just need a car that's going to get me from A to B until I get into a house and I'm much more settled. For him, <laughs> he was like, I'm really giving myself 60 days to get settled here in Georgia after moving from California. But then he met me. Uh -huh. Again, that's the story. So he had me test drive the BMW. So much so, I loved the BMW. The BMW. Uh, loved it. Uh, I wanted a dark blue BMW with cognac interior. Cognac. I wanted yuck. an X5, and I wanted an M series. So I can clearly tell y'all that's exactly the car I wanted. We were online looking for that particular car because not every dealership had it. I was okay with a black BMW if needed. Um, but I really wanted dark blue and I really wanted that cognac colored interior. Mm. So he felt like I want you to still, I want you to consider all of a sudden an Audi Q8. Let's just see how you like it. If you don't really like it, then we will go back to the BMW. I cannot tell you why he switched up. I can't. Um, but I can tell you he took me to an Audi dealership on Peachtree Industrial. He test drove an Audi and I test drove an Audi Q8. Can you imagine going from county to county where you live? For this fool to not really be getting you a car. Oh my God. Eight. Um, I loved the Q8. Loved it, loved it, loved it. But I was tired of test driving cars. By this point, I had test, dri test driven so many cars. Um, our weekends were spent either looking at a house or test driving cars. And I was picky, I will admit that. So he had me test drive the Q8. I really liked it. I finally just told him, look, I'm good with either the BMW or the Audi. Cause I'm tired of, I'm tired of test driving cars. He told my family he was buying me a new car because it, keep in mind, he had, well, not keep in mind, let me let y'all know. He had met my family initially on Zoom because again, we were locked down. He had met my family. Um, he also had met my family in person because at this point it was like, look, if you're not showing any symptoms, maybe we can do family dinner. Um, and so we had, so he had met my family in person and now we will go ahead and move towards part 10 of this series. Part nine. I'm upset <clears throat> because she said he didn't give her no reason to think that what he was saying or doing was cap. But that house was every reason to believe that that was cap. Then he driving a Fort Taurus. Nothing wrong with Fort Tauruses, but you don't go from Fort Taurus to Bugatti. Not everybody. Okay? Now, also another red flag is you telling me that you want to get a house first and you're going to wait on the car because you got to get the house first. But also, if we're trying to get approved for a house, y'all know that we cannot buy a car. I mean, everybody knows that, you know. In the process of buying a house, you can't buy nothing. Shit. Okay? So, in the process of you trying to purchase a house, two, two, two in the chat, you buy a car or attempting to buy a car, I'm so upset with her. Let's just get into part 10, because I'm just... Okay, part 10. Who the fuck did I marry? Who knows? Okay, had to sneeze. All right, so at Bless. this point, I had test-driven all these cars. Kia's, um, hell, he even had me test-drive a Nissan Murano. But the main two were BMW and an Audi. He had told my grandfather he was getting me a car. Talking he had to told my, my granddad. Aunt he was getting me a car. That he was going to. My he, he was like, she's going to be my wife. I want her to be in something secure. So 
my family was really like, wow, you know, uh, wow, you know, who knew that he had this kind of money? Um, he don't bring. And so I hated the fact that he did that because anytime he got around my family, here's another red flag to put in, in the United Nations of red flags. He would always talk about money and he would always brag. I never realized it in real time. I didn't realize it until I was out of the situation. He always bragged about the fact that he could fight, the fact that he had money, and the fact that he played football. Those are the three things he always bragged about. Back to the cars. So I told him, I was like, pick one between the BMW and the Audi, because you said you're buying it. So okay. pick one. So this man chose the Audi. So he takes me to the dealership. I wanted a white Q8. He does the, give me the printout of how much it's gonna cost tax tag and title to get this Q8. Gentleman who's helping us gives him the, the printout. He's saying he's going to pay this money for the car out of the savings account that's, that's offshore. That's the story, that's what he's saying. So he apparently is asking the guy, you know, is there a holding fee? Can I pay a holding fee to secure this car while I'm working to get the money transferred? Because obviously with COVID, it's gonna take long for the banks to transfer the money. Side note, I need everyone to understand one of the reasons why he was able to get away with the stuff he got away with is because we were on lockdown. It's crazy because it's now 2024, but I don't know, do we all remember how it seemed like a lot of stuff stopped in 2020 now? Keep in mind, that's not an excuse I'm making because shit still got done. But in terms of- She making an excuse, no cap. Business as usual. Business as usual just was not happening in 2020 at this time so when he's saying oh it's going to take a while for the bank to transfer the money the gentleman who was working at audi did not even he didn't make a face he didn't he he didn't blink he was like i know it's going to take a while because of covid so basically what ends up happening is we leave he has the printout he calls the bank or he calls his his um financial advisor who does have a name, the financial advisor's name is Eric. I feel comfortable using certain people's names, especially if we find out they didn't exist. Um, so he calls Eric. It's not existing for me. Who the hell was you talking to? What kind of disorder is this? He tells Eric in front of me, in front of me, hey, I need to transfer $72,526, whatever the amount was, because I'm buying. I'm so nosy. I would have been like, hey, Eric, <clears throat> how you doing? <clears throat> Eric? I say, Eric. <laughs> A car for my fiance. This is the bank account information. Do you need me to give it to you over the phone or do you need me to email it to you? Pause. I can't hear what the person's saying, but that's what he would do. Do you need me to give it to you? Eric! <laughs> you got a wife? We should go out from time to time. Let me speak to your wife. Can I, Eric? I'm so crazy. What's his area code? What's the, what's the area code? And I would have seen his fucking screensaver. <sighs> to you over the phone, or can I email it to you? Okay. Nah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Give me a few minutes, and I'll go ahead and email it to you. All right. Let me know. I'll call you back to let to find out if you received it. Okay. Hang up. So I'm hearing this because again, I'm not paying attention to. Did I hear anybody on the other phone? Did I hear anybody on the other end? So he um, he proceeds to type up an email, type up something, telling him this is the information that we need. Um, I didn't think anything of it. 
he called me at work the next day to tell me that the money was sent to Audi, that he called Audi and he confirmed with Audi that they received the money. Boy, shut up. She wanted this to be true. She thought she heard Eric. She admittedly is saying she didn't hear shit. I'm with you when you're right on she wanted this to happen. I really feel like she was just as much in the delusion as he was. Or just like a great bit of nosy. Like, I'm just about to be nosy. <laughs> I'm just going to see. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, girl. What he told me is that the car is going to be um, delivered to the house. Y'all, We. it's not that I lived in a hood because I didn't. But I did not live in an area of Clayton County where you would have a brand new Audi delivered to your house. So I remember saying to him, I don't want that car like delivered to the house. Not yet, because I need to put that car in the garage. And my Nissan was, I only had a one car garage. So my Nissan was in the garage. So he said, okay. So she about to be out on Tara Boulevard with a damn Audi and Clayco. Girl. Okay, well, let me call them back and change the delivery date. Can you be home or can you t do a half day? So he's asking me, can you work a half day so that they can deliver the car and you and you will be home for it? I said, yes. That and you want me to stop my money? To work a half day for an invisible tow truck to pull up? For nobody to be there. That nigga was shell. For real. That's fine. Because again, it's COVID. I'm working from home anyway. Um, I only had to go in the office two days a week. So I, I'm at home the next day. He told me the car would be delivered between the hours of one and three. Hmm. <sighs> Obviously, between one and three, nothing happened. So three o'clock, I called. We know. We know. He's at work. He sends me the voicemail. He calls me back. I said, it's three o'clock. I didn't know one ever came with the car. Um, what's going on? And then I remember I was like, well, do I need to call Audi myself? Because I thought that you handled it. But if you didn't handle it, let me, do I need to call them? Girl, she used to say little antagonistic shit. She done said a couple things. I would have been like, oh, who you talking to? Now, I said I was getting you a call. You better chill out. <laughs> and so whenever I would suggest I will handle it, he would get very, very defensive. Red flag number 472. So he was like, no, I will call Audi. Don't do anything. I'll call Audi and find out what's going on. Okay. So I'm at home chilling, cooking dinner, normal night. He calls me back and says, yeah, the car was stuck on the truck in Spartanburg because apparently that's where their deliveries come from. So when he told me this, I was in the kitchen laughing <laughs> because by this point, I will be honest. And I told y'all I'll be honest, even when it makes me look bad. I was guilty of. I, on one hand, I believed him. And on the other hand, I was like, let me see what lie he come up with. Toxic as hell. She was absolutely a part of the toxicity. A match made in heaven. I'm sick of it. Continue. Let me just see. Um, but keep in mind, my brain was really like not rationalizing, not comprehending how deep the lie was. I just thought yes, it was. that no one told him the car was going to be delivered and he made that up. I had no idea how deep the lie went. So he said, you know, the car's in Spartanburg. Um, it should be delivered this weekend. The weekend came, he had a whole other excuse. Um, I don't remember what the exact excuse was as to why the car was never delivered. I do remember we got into an argument and I was like, don't even worry about it. I'm going to get a new car my damn self. 
I don't even need your help. Which is probably one of the worst things you can tell a narcissist because they love to be the hero, you know, they lo- it's, it's all about them. But I was like, don't even worry about it. I'll get, when I, when I have the money to get a car myself, I'll do it. I don't want to hear anything. I about- ain't gonna lie. It's people out here like that because I just got to give a quick little synopsis, not a synopsis, an uh, example. I don't know if any of y'all used to get Jordans back in the days when you was in high school or whatever, middle school or whatever. So it was always about four to five students that got every single pair of Jordans, right? And you used to be like, damn, they get every pair? So you may get a couple pair every once in a while. So then people get to looking at your foots every time them Jordans come out. I don't know about y'all, but that was my generation. Every time the Jordans came out and you go to school, they looking straight at your feet first. What's going on with you? Oh, you ain't get the Jordans. Niggas, it was so bad that people started lying and saying they got them, but they in the house. They didn't want to wear them. And then they never wore them. And then you get to asking again, and it was just re- weird. Like, God damn, I got them, and I don't feel like wearing them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to just wear these busties. You know, I'm not wearing them. But don't worry about me. I got them. Child, just lying. <laughs> yeah, we used to go through that. I used to be the get probably if – if 10 Jordans came out that year, I had at least six, okay? But I didn't have all 10, but it was people that had all 10. But I never said I had some shit I ain't have, for real. Else about a new car. I don't want to hear shit else about a car. Because at this point, I was spending way too much time trying to figure out, are we getting a car? Are we getting a house? Like, where what the fuck is going on always there was an excuse so when i told him i don't want to hear anything else they was like that with uggs what it's about a car and i am not going to a dealership to test drive another nah kids way worse these days kids are way worse these days nigga put my electronically they are messed up if you ain't got a pair of beats headphones or some airpods you are not fitting in then it went to first of all it went from a little bit of drip because they don't really care about clothes these days these damn children iphone you gotta at least have an up-to-date iphone the beat, at least AirPods at first, Beats headphones, an iPad, a PS5, and now essential hoodies. Trust me, I know. <laughs> Sick of it. Oh, and Apple Watches is next. Um, that ended that whole discussion right there. So this is what I'm this is where I'm going to interject what I believe was happening. I believe that my ex-husband is the type of person he gets off uh you know nutty. He gets off on you being excited about something that he knows you will never get. So I believe that he enjoyed going to car dealerships. He en- So let me give y'all a plug with this last thing I'm going to interrupt. Essential kids hoodies. Is on Paxon.com. Don't say I ain't never tell you nothing. And they real. And you can get them for retail. I got London one the other day for $100. But they did have some that was $50. But she didn't fit them. But $13.14. She fit that. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know. Enjoyed um, watching me test drive a car and get excited about it. Knowing I was not going to get it. It is the it is the level of cruelty, and again, I'm telling y'all stuff, stuff that I found out way later on. It is the level of cruelty that I still cannot comprehend. So I get my adult essentials from, from Paxon too, friend. Audi, 
I think he just enjoys seeing me get excited and then pull it away. The children's right, ones online. All right. Him enjoying her excitement and then pulling away. That's an ugly trait to have. Okay. But anyway, let's let's look at the part 11. All right. Part 11. So for this part, I'm just going to give you some backstory on the family. Pause all the stuff about the house. Pause the stuff about the car. This is backstory. Friend, I took her wig family, off. My ex-husband's family. All right, follow me. My ex Friend, why you ain't doing no videos at the house? <laughs> Where's the house? Okay. Husband's parents, mom and dad, are both deceased. Mom passed away from cancer. Um, dad passed away shortly after her. I'm not sure what he passed away from. So he has a number of siblings. He has two, with his parents, he has um, two siblings, two brothers, excuse me, two brothers. She really don't have One is older, lives in Philly. One oh. is younger by two years, lives in Nashville. He has two sisters. One, Shantae, is older, lives in Douglasville with her husband and two kids, a boy and a girl. Younger sister, Kim, is the baby, lives in Augusta with her husband, worked at, I think he told me, Procter & Gamble. That was the story. He had two half-brothers that were through his dad. One brother lived in Baltimore. The other brother lived in Augusta. The brother that lived in Augusta, I have physically met in person, shook hands, hugged, all that. Mm -hmm. The brother that lived in Baltimore, I have FaceTimed with talk to him mm -hmm. the brother that lived in philly the older brother that he looked up to i have never talked to him on the phone i would always talk to him um through my through my ex-husband because he the one who taught him them lies friend so the conversation would be like <laughs> hey babe uh Brother, brother, so and so said, "Hey, he didn't call him brother so and so. We'll call him John." John said, "Hey, hey, John, I would be in the bathroom doing my hair, brushing my teeth. Hey, John," and he was like, "Did you hear?" He said, "How you doing?" I was like, "I'm good. How's he doing?" Um, cause that's just me. And so he would relay back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, he talked to John every day from starting around July after the grandmother passed away. He would talk to John every morning. We both would be getting ready for work and he would be on the phone with John. They would okay, be talking boy. for 30, 40 minutes, talking about football, talking about other siblings. They would be talking about cars. They talk, I mean, it was, it was really like, not a big deal. They would talk about the brother in Baltimore. They would talk about the brother in Augusta. And then they would, they would reminisce. This is the conversations I could hear. Let me explain. When I say I can hear a conversation, what that means is mm. I am physically standing near him or next to him where I could hear him with the phone up to his ear talking to someone because it wasn't me. Mm. Okay. I may not hear the other person because the phone call may not be on speakerphone. But what I hear is, um, for example, I hear, hey man, what y'all doing? Oh, for real? Y'all barbecuing this weekend? What y'all making? Oh, oh then nothing? Up. Nah, I think me and her are gonna stay in this weekend because, you know, these numbers is looking crazy with COVID. Yeah, she over here. She's sitting right here. She watched the TV. Okay, hold on. John said, hey. Hey, John. Uh, let me speak you to John. Him? Okay. John. All right, bro. I just wanted to check in on you. That's the type of conversation I'm explaining. Okay, so I hope that that gives a little more clarity about the type of conversations I'm hearing. Oh, uh, you didn't hear so, nothing. Um, I don't know why this lady is coming out. Um, okay, so... That's the that's how he would talk to his <laughs> Give me the phone. Let me speak to John. Okay. Oh shit, how that happen? And so he would relay back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um <laughs> he talked to John 
every day from starting around July after the grandmother passed away. Okay, we already get talk it. to John every morning. Oh, for real? Y'all barbecuing this weekend? That's the that's how he would talk to his siblings. The grandmother passed away. He called me around April. Did she? Did she? Recipes granted if it's for real, but I'm just saying. May <clears throat> and told me that his grandmother passed away. His grandmother um, on his dad's side mm. had died suddenly from COVID. Mm. She had symptoms. <clears throat> she went to bed and did not wake up. Uh, he was distraught. He was crying. He wasn't eating. He was just sitting there, um, listening to music, not watching TV, just sad <laughs> because he was like, you know, my grandmother was always my my support system. So, from what I saw, it really bothered him. I did not think anything of it. I'm one of those people. If you tell me somebody in your in your family passed away, I'm gonna believe you because I don't play about death. Uh uh-uh. uh. That's the that's the, the the shit right there. I don't play about it. So you ain't gonna play with me. How you know? What happened? Where was it at? What hospital was she at? Why did it happen like that? Where was the doctors? Where's your motherfucking nieces and nephews? Why ain't nobody taking cash out of it? So you done lied on granny? Oh! And I guess I expect other people don't either. Um, However, however, that is not the same for everyone else. Uh. But we'll get there. When is the firm? So family, he talked to his, he had his uh, sister, Shantae, who lived in Douglasville. Um, like I said, she was married with two kids. Apparently she was a nurse. So when I had my miscarriage, that was a sister that he was like, my sister will take you to the hospital. Like that's what family does. Okay. Um, I had never met Shantae. I've been on the phone or excuse me. I've been around him when he was on the phone with Shantae never heard her part of the conversation um but he would be talking to his sister that's what he said that's what it sounded like too um now what is interesting is that we how it sound like that you ain't hear nothing how it sound like that you ain't hear nothing friend he lived maybe 35 40 minutes away from douglasville So there were plenty of times that he had invited me to go with him to his sister's house. Okay, let me tell you how this would always work out. Total times he invited me was probably three times for different barbecues or whatnot. The first time he invited me, I was like, no, I ain't going because again, COVID. And she's a nurse. Hell no. Um, the second time he was like, yeah, she invited us, but I don't think we should go because COVID. No. The third time we agree, I agreed to go. I was like, absolutely. I'll go meet your sister. Like, that'd be great. Um, on our way to her house, to Douglasville to go see the sister. Um, apparently he got a phone call. The phone was always like on vibrate. But he got a phone call and he told me that something came up. And so she's she had to cancel the barbecue to get together, whatever. Now, how you don't hit a phone in the car? Uh, yeah. Hello. The, everything in the car going down. The music going down. You going down. The kids. Shut up. Shut up. Your father's on the phone. What happened? Let me listen. Who? (laughs) Me and Honey Sauce do this with each other. (laughs) Literally. AC got to go off. Heat got to go off. Everybody. Shut In the car. I need silence. Okay? What you say? Who? And why we done drove all the way over here? Why you ain't tell us that before? He ain't got CarPlay voice? You, you, he couldn't put on the Bluetooth? Was we not listening to any music? Suspicious. 
Um, and so I was just like, oh man, you know, okay, well, hopefully we can go another time. It was, it didn't happen close enough for me to have red flags. Crazy. If that makes sense. Crazy. Thing. Um, but at this point, as y'all probably are like, girl, you so blind. But again, I, I have other words that come to mind. It's like, okay. <laughs> blind ain't through, one. We'll see, we'll <laughs> reschedule. Um, and so we just went out to eat and then he talked to another brother, the brother from Augusta that he would have on speakerphone. So it was like, you know, I didn't, I didn't think anything of it. I really didn't. Um, man. And the more I talk about it, the more I realize, like, I, I'm not a dumb person, <laughs> but it just never dawned on me the things that you have to now investigate. Um, it just, it didn't dawn on me. Everything is investigatable. You got a job and you telling me you're going to work every day. Oh, I need to pop up and give you some lunch because I need to make sure. Don't let you be late on the bill. Oh, my God. You go to work all the time. And I know for a fact because you get your ass up every day, put on a uniform and go to work. You'll be going to work. So now I got to post up at your job. I suddenly got to go to the gym at 7 a.m. You got to be to work by 8. I am in your parking lot at 7.45. Eating my Bojangles biscuit, drinking some coffee, and waiting on you to pull up. Okay? Because I'm at the gym. You don't pull up, I'm on your ass. Okay? And I know that you walk through this door. <laughs> But nevertheless, that is the backstory <sighs> for his family, right? Grandmother passed away three weeks later. For real? He called me and told me his uncle had passed away. Oh, from COVID. my God. The uncle had tested positive. Don't get me wrong. This was actually happening. This type of stuff was happening. And so, certain people could not go to the funeral. Now, that's a real thing. We had somebody. Well, hell, I don't know if he, if he was lying or not. <laughs> It might have been him because this story started to sound familiar. <laughs> Going to the hospital and he died. It was um, a bit of a red flag. It was a bit of a red flag. Bitch. But like I said, I don't play about death. So I was just like, wow. Because of these two deaths, he became a stickler about COVID. And when I mean a stickler, wear your mask, wear gloves, hand sanitize, wash your hands. Like he was annoying about making sure neither one of us caught COVID. I was So too. now I'm going to give you the backstory in regards to what I was told with the ex-wife. This don't make y'all feel like, okay. where is the money, LaShondra? This don't make y'all feel like that. Where the money at, LaShondra? This don't make y'all feel like that. I don't know who was him or LaShondra. <laughs> so, first of all, I need another drink. I, you know, oh, child, it's just to get me a little sip of a shot or two. Oh, oh! Give me a second. Because I am, bitch. I am behooveth and bamboozleth, okay? So, you, you, you <laughs> first you lie about the house. Then you lie about the car. And you think I'm going to believe you about a death? Because, see, at that point, you done cried wolf. First of all, you done uprooted yourself from your alleged place. Done put your ragged ass in my house, okay? Done tried to uproot my whole comfortability uncomfortably to a new house that you know you ain't got no money and no credit for. Little Chandra. Then, 
You tell me the house on the market, market, the, the shit on the market at first, but then it's off the market for suddenly. And then when I asked you about it being off the market, you lie about it being off the market. You don't even know. I done checked the website. Then I had caught a flat tire at first, or oh, my tire blew. Then I had the nerve to get pregnant by you. And then she didn't even tell us if the dick was good. I really wanted to know. She didn't say, like, girl, our first time it was obviously mediocre so then you get some mediocre meat he lying with mediocre meat you get pregnant and god just kept squozing in saving squozing in saving your ass and you will stand with that nigga all the time okay so then the nigga talking about death during COVID, he suddenly got sisters and brothers and brothers and sisters and talking to people on the phone with the cars and shit like that. But you ain't hearing nobody on the phone. And you ain't even asking no extended questions after he done lied about all I can't be this loud in my office. So I'm going to get it out now. You are a part of the problem, LaShondra. And I know your name is LaShondra Risa, but I'm sick of it, okay? And my heart can only take but so much. I am only on part 11. 12. Ah. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. You dig what I'm saying? I have to go to part 12 because we are going to part 19 tonight. Okay? Love y'all. <clears throat> Appreciate y'all. <clears throat>